The era of NASA's Space Launch System, SLS, the Orion spacecraft and the ambitious Lunar Gateway project seems to be approaching a bitter and unexpected end. This dramatic shift in America's space ambitions was signaled recently when the Trump administration unveiled a preliminary version of the budget proposal for fiscal year 2026. This proposal, often referred to as a skinny budget, delivered a heavy blow to several of NASA's cornerstone programs, programs that had once consumed tens of billions of dollars each year. These are not minor reductions either. We're talking about ruthless cuts, some even resulting in the complete elimination of entire projects. So, the big question now is, what lies ahead for NASA's moon mission? Could SpaceX's Starship emerge as the ultimate solution for lunar exploration and potentially replace aging infrastructure? On today's episode of Alpha Tech, we break down everything you need to know. The budget, released on May 2 by the White House's Office of Management and Budget OMB, allocates $18.8 billion to NASA. When adjusted for inflation, this amount is almost identical to NASA's 1980 budget of $18.925 billion. This marks a shocking reduction, nearly 25% less than the $24.9 billion appropriated in the fiscal year 2025 under the continuing resolution. The preliminary proposal provides only broad strokes and high-level financial details, with a more comprehensive budget expected later in May. Despite the significant cuts, NASA's acting administrator Janet Petro attempted to put a positive spin on the developments. In a public statement, she emphasized NASA's continued dedication to its space exploration mission. Petro said, This proposal balances investments in lunar and Mars exploration with critical science and technology research. I'm grateful for the President's support and eager to collaborate with the administration and Congress to advance NASA's ambitious goals. The administration's stated priority remains clear to lead human missions to the Moon and Mars. More than $7 billion has been earmarked for lunar exploration, with an additional $1 billion in new funding set aside for programs focused on Mars. According to an accompanying fact sheet, one of the key objectives behind this budget restructuring is to refocus NASA's funding on staying ahead of China in the new lunar race and on putting the first human on Mars. The ultimate goal is to maintain U.S. leadership in space through innovative and cost-effective strategies. However, there's a catch. While the budget highlights funding for flagship missions to the Moon and Mars, it also introduces drastic cuts to many programs falling under the broader Moon to Mars and science initiatives. These cuts will have significant implications not only for NASA's long-term vision but also for international collaborations and the global perception of U.S. space leadership. Let's take a closer look at how the funds are being allocated. The proposed budget introduces an additional $647 million aimed specifically at Mars-focused human space exploration. A major part of this funding will go toward reviving the Mars Sample Return MSR, mission which has undergone a massive strategic overhaul. Initially, the MSR was designed as a robotic campaign involving multiple components, an orbiter, a lander, several sample retrieval helicopters, and an ascent vehicle, all developed jointly by NASA and the European Space Agency ESA. However, due to escalating costs and lack of progress, this plan has now been scrapped. Instead, the sample return mission will now become the responsibility of future crewed missions planned for the 2030s. This marks a significant departure from earlier NASA policy and is largely driven by financial limitations and logistical setbacks. The robotic sample return, once hailed as a groundbreaking milestone, had become bogged down in delays and skyrocketing costs. Transitioning this responsibility to future astronauts is seen as a cost-cutting move, albeit one that pushes the timeline much further into the future. Another key casualty of the new budget is the Artemis program, which had been touted as NASA's roadmap to return humans to the moon and eventually serve as a stepping stone for Mars missions. Under the proposed budget, Artemis is facing major restructuring and an $879 million reduction to its legacy human exploration systems. Most notably, the budget proposes to retire the Space Launch System and the Orion spacecraft after the Artemis 3 mission. This is a significant shift considering NASA's original plans. As recently as 2016, NASA envisioned using the SLS to launch critical components of the Lunar Gateway, a small space station orbiting the Moon, and to enable reusable lunar landers. The idea was to use SLS and Orion to ferry astronauts to the Gateway by 2028, with subsequent missions delivering them to the Moon's surface. However, these plans began to shift dramatically in 2019 when then-Vice President Mike Pence called for an accelerated timeline. NASA was subsequently ordered to return astronauts to the moon by 2024. 
that change in schedule led to the deprioritization of the gateway. Instead, SpaceX was awarded a contract to launch core elements of the station, such as the Power and Propulsion Element, PPE, and the Habitation and Logistics Outpost, Halo, using the Falcon Heavy. The original mission timeline aimed for a 2024 launch but has now slipped to 2027, just months ahead of the planned Artemis III mission. As a result, NASA was compelled to explore alternatives, eventually awarding SpaceX a contract for the Human Landing System, HLS, using its next-generation Starship vehicle. Despite these changes, the Gateway remained a critical part of the Artemis architecture. The International Habitation Module, IHAB, a joint project with European partners, was scheduled for delivery to the Gateway in 2028 via SLS. Following the successful setup, NASA planned to launch one lunar mission per year. But now, even that plan is in jeopardy. The new budget proposal could spell the end of the SLS, Orion, and Gateway programs entirely after 2027. According to internal reports, the SLS alone costs around $4 billion per launch and is approximately 140% over budget. Faced with such staggering costs, the new budget includes funding for a program aimed at replacing SLS and Orion with more cost-effective commercial alternatives. These alternatives are expected to support more ambitious and frequent lunar missions, aligning with the broader strategy of leveraging private sector innovation. One of the most controversial aspects of the proposed budget is its call to terminate the Lunar Gateway itself. Developed in collaboration with international partners, the Gateway was envisioned as a stepping stone for future deep space missions. It was intended to serve as a platform for lunar surface operations and as a precursor to eventual missions to Mars. Its cancellation not only disrupts NASA's internal plans but also impacts global partnerships that were relying on its deployment. In the political sphere, opinions remain divided. Jared Isaac Mann, a private astronaut and nominee to be NASA's new administrator, reaffirmed his support for the Artemis program during his April 9 confirmation hearing. He described the current Artemis architecture as the fastest and most effective path to returning humans to the moon. However, he also stated that he would support transitioning away from legacy systems like SLS and Orion in the future. In response to a question from Senator Ted Cruz, the Republican chairman of the Senate Commerce Committee, Isaac Mann highlighted the rapid growth and capability of the commercial launch market. The commercial launch market is more capable than ever, with numerous American providers investing in heavy lift capabilities. NASA should take advantage of that, he wrote. This perspective underscores a growing consensus within both NASA and the U.S. government, that the future of space exploration may lie more in the hands of companies like SpaceX, Blue Origin, and others than in traditional, government-developed systems. So what does all of this mean for the future of America's space program? In short, it marks a pivot. A major one. NASA's grand vision of building a semi-permanent presence on the moon using the Gateway and SLS Orion system may no longer be feasible. Instead, we may see a new era where reusable, commercial launch systems dominate deep space exploration. While it's too early to predict how these changes will fully play out, one thing is clear. NASA is being pushed to evolve. With budget constraints acting as a forcing function, the agency will need to rely increasingly on the private sector, foster international partnerships in new ways, and find innovative solutions to achieve its bold goals. The dream of walking on the moon and stepping on Mars is far from over, but the path forward is changing dramatically. It's a transformation that could ultimately accelerate progress, or if not carefully managed, could stall it for years to come. The coming months and the release of the full budget in May will shed more light on what the future holds for American space exploration. The budget, released on May 2 by the White House's Office of Management and Budget, often referred to as the OMB, marked a major turning point for NASA. The new proposal allocates just backslash $18.8 billion to the space agency. At first glance, that might not sound too bad, until you factor in inflation. Once you adjust for the value of money over time, that figure is virtually identical to NASA's budget back in 1980. Yes, more than four decades ago. This means NASA, in today's world of advanced space ambitions and global competition, is being asked to operate with funding equivalent to what it had during the early space shuttle era. And when you compare this to last year's funding, the situation becomes even more stark. In fiscal year 2025, NASA was working with a budget of backslash $24.9 billion under a continuing resolution. This new proposal cuts nearly 25% of that funding. That's not just a belt-tightening measure, it's a serious contraction. For a government agency tasked with pushing the boundaries of human knowledge and expanding humanity's reach into space, 
that kind of reduction can completely reshape its mission and capabilities. These aren't symbolic cuts. They are structural ones that will force NASA to rethink everything from launch systems to long-term planning. It's important to understand that this budget is what's known as a skinny budget. That means it only offers a high-level overview of spending intentions. It doesn't dive into the nitty-gritty of each program. That level of detail will be revealed later when the full budget is released later in May. But even these early details tell a compelling and troubling story. NASA is being asked to do more with significantly less. And that's especially difficult at a time when other nations, particularly China, are increasing their investments in space exploration. Despite the dark clouds hanging over this announcement, NASA's acting administrator, Janet Petro, tried to stay upbeat in her public response. She acknowledged the challenges posed by the new financial landscape but focused on the positive. In her statement, she emphasized that NASA remains committed to its goals, particularly those related to exploration and scientific advancement. Petro said, this proposal balances investments in lunar and Mars exploration with critical science and technology research. It's a statement designed to reassure both internal staff and external partners that NASA isn't backing down. It's simply shifting gears in response to new limitations. Petro also highlighted her appreciation for the continued support of the president, noting that the administration hasn't lost sight of the importance of space exploration. She expressed eagerness to work with Congress and other stakeholders to find a path forward. But behind the optimistic tone, there's no hiding the fact that the agency is under pressure. Balancing ambitions with funding realities is never easy, especially when you're leading one of the most complex and high-risk scientific enterprises in the world. And while positive rhetoric is necessary, action and funding are what ultimately determine outcomes. The administration's stated goal is clear. The United States must maintain its leadership in space. This means continuing to push forward with plans for human missions to the moon and Mars. According to the fact sheet released with the budget, over backslash $7 billion is still earmarked for lunar exploration initiatives. This includes support for surface operations, technologies that support life on the moon, and infrastructure needed to eventually transition to Mars missions. Additionally, there's another backslash $1 billion in new funding dedicated to advancing technologies and programs directly tied to future Mars expeditions. The reason behind this targeted investment is as much geopolitical as it is scientific. The White House has made it clear that it sees space as a domain of strategic competition, particularly with China. China's aggressive space program, which includes plans for a permanent lunar base and multiple Mars missions, has raised alarms in Washington. By focusing NASA's limited budget on lunar and Martian priorities, the administration is hoping to outpace China's advances and reinforce American dominance in the next frontier of exploration. But such a strategy requires laser-sharp focus and ruthless prioritization, which means some programs are inevitably left behind. This is where the budget becomes a double-edged sword. While it claims to support America's ambitions to lead in deep space, it does so by cutting or eliminating other critical projects. Many programs that fall under NASA's broader Moon to Mars initiative, and even some under the agency's scientific research umbrella, are now facing reductions. These aren't just hypothetical losses. They translate into real delays, cancellations, and missed opportunities. For example, experimental technology demonstrators, robotic precursors, earth science missions, and international collaborative efforts are all vulnerable under this budgetary model. These cuts don't just affect timelines and hardware, they have ripple effects throughout the entire space ecosystem. When programs are defunded, thousands of jobs tied to those efforts are affected. University research labs lose grants. International partners are forced to reassess their involvement. The message it sends to the global community is also concerning. For decades, NASA has been a symbol of consistency and ambition. Budget cuts and shifting priorities could erode that perception, making other countries hesitant to rely on NASA for future collaborations, particularly when it comes to long-duration missions that require years of planning and development. Let's dig deeper into where some of this money is actually going. The budget adds a new line item of backslash $647 million specifically for Mars-focused human exploration. This funding will be used to revive the Mars Sample Return Mission, a program that has gone through significant challenges over the years. Originally, the mission was conceived as a complex robotic campaign. The plan was to send a lander to Mars, collect samples using helicopters, place them in an ascent vehicle, and transfer them to an orbiter that would return them to Earth. This ambitious collaboration between NASA and the European Space Agency was seen as a landmark effort. 
However, due to skyrocketing costs, missed milestones and growing complexity, the robotic Mars sample return mission was recently deemed unsustainable in its original form. Instead, NASA is now shifting its strategy. The new plan is to push the sample retrieval responsibility to future human missions to Mars, currently projected for the 2030s. That means astronauts, not robots, will be tasked with collecting and returning the samples. While this may save money in the short term, it significantly delays the scientific payoff. What was once expected to be a historic robotic first is now being postponed indefinitely, making some scientists question whether it will happen at all. This is just one example of how budget constraints are forcing strategic pivots. The delays and restructuring of Mars sample return echo a broader trend across the agency. Grand visions are being scaled back in favor of affordability. The Artemis program, NASA's flagship lunar initiative, is another major victim of this shift. Once promoted as America's pathway to establishing a sustainable human presence on the moon, Artemis is now facing an backslash $879 million budget cut. Even more notably, the proposal recommends retiring both the Space Launch System and the Orion spacecraft after Artemis III, a dramatic departure from NASA's long-term planning. The SLS and Orion were supposed to be the backbone of Artemis missions. Developed at enormous cost and over many years, these systems were designed to ferry astronauts beyond low Earth orbit, with the SLS providing the lift capacity and Orion serving as the crew capsule. They were meant to launch astronauts to the Lunar Gateway, a small space station planned to orbit the moon and support recurring missions to the lunar surface. However, with Artemis timelines slipping and costs continuing to rise, the budget has now flagged these programs as too expensive to maintain. Their future is uncertain beyond the third Artemis mission. This represents a huge reversal. Back in 2016, NASA planned to rely on the SLS to launch components of the Lunar Gateway and support lunar landers. Those plans were accelerated in 2019 when Vice President Mike Pence called for boots on the moon by 2024. That shift deprioritized the Gateway, and NASA awarded SpaceX a contract to deliver the Gateway's core elements using Falcon Heavy instead of SLS. Over time, SpaceX also won the contract for the human landing system, using its fully reusable Starship vehicle. With timelines slipping and costs ballooning, NASA began transitioning its reliance away from legacy systems and now that transition seems to be official. Even so, the Gateway wasn't completely shelved. Its International Habitation Module, IHAB, developed with European partners, was still scheduled for launch via SLS in 2028. That mission was supposed to mark the start of annual crewed lunar missions. But with the proposed budget eliminating SLS funding beyond Artemis III, the entire Gateway plan may be scrapped. It's a significant blow, not just to NASA but to its international collaborators. Countries that invested time and resources into gateway modules are now left in limbo, unsure whether their contributions will ever leave Earth. The budget may save money, but it comes at the cost of cooperation and momentum.